Hey everyone, Mr. Sujano here. In today's video, we're going to talk about GGPO and their move to open source. Let's get started. So just the other day on Twitter, GGPO creator Tony Cannon announced that GGPO has a new home and is now available under the MIT license. And if you're wondering what that means, what GGPO is, GGPO stands for Good Game Peace Out. It is known as one of the premier online networking solutions used in fighting games and arcade games. So if you've ever heard the term of lag or netcode, GGPO is a netcode that helps deal with lag. And in terms of netcode, there are different options out there. One of the most popular options right now for netcode is a delay-based netcode. At a high level, what a delay-based netcode does is it essentially slows the game down until it receives signal from both connected PCs or systems, just both connected players. And what it'll do in bad connections is slow the game down to such a state that it's a very choppy and slow experience, and seconds could feel like minutes. You could press a button and there would be a noticeable delay between your button press and when it's actually showing up on the screen. And what GGPO does that makes it special is introduces sort of a prediction based algorithm with rollback. And now I think this paragraph explains rollback netcode very well. So it says in rollback networking, game logic is allowed to proceed with just the inputs from the local player. If the remote inputs have not yet arrived when it's time to execute a frame, the networking code will predict what it expects the remote players to do based on previously seen inputs. Since there's no waiting, the game feels just as responsive as it does offline. When those inputs finally arrive over the network, they can be compared to the ones that were predicted earlier. If they differ, the game can be re-simulated from the point of divergence to the current visible frame. So in a nutshell, let's pretend you have a very good connection, a very fast connection, and your opponent has a very slow and poor connection. And your connection sends signals to the game a lot faster than them. Well, what will happen is the game will learn from what they're doing and start predicting the next move that they're going to do. As soon as the move actually hits, so as soon as they hit a button and it registers within the game, the game, the GGPO engine here, will check to see if they match. So for example, if it predicted a kick and you actually hit a kick, the game would keep going on, you wouldn't see anything. If they don't match, then what will happen is the game will roll back to the instance that the inputs didn't match, where its prediction was wrong. And that may sound bad because if you think about it, it's like, well, I got so far, maybe I hit him a few times, but now the game is rolling back and all of a sudden he has so much more health. Well, that's not normally the case. This is done in fractions of a second sometimes. It's very, very seamless. On a very poor connection, you might notice some rollback. But if it does roll back, it's not like it's going to roll back 10 seconds on your game and go from there. It's usually just fractions of a second or maybe even a second or two at the very most. And this is a very optimal experience between both players because the game proceeds at normal speed. Unless there's a lot of rollback and it's a very poor connection, then you will notice a difference, but it'll still progress faster than a delay based netcode. And this is why GGPO is very highly thought of over here in Canada, US, and even Mexico. Because if you think about it, there are a lot of miles between all of our countries and between locations in countries. For example, if I'm playing someone and I'm here in Toronto and playing someone in Vancouver, there is going to be a latency issue because it's a lot of ground for the signal to cover. That also goes if I were to play someone in Mexico, from Canada to Mexico is a big distance. Even within the country, for example, if you're in New York playing someone from Texas, there is a big distance to cover, which will result in some issues with latency. And on top of that, let's face it, internet service is not perfect for everybody in the States and Canada and Mexico. It depends on where you live, but internet speed and internet connection quality very greatly. And that's where GGPO really helps. And I know this was kind of a long explanation and hopefully not too technical. I tried to keep it at a really high level, um, but this is why GGPO is hailed as a very good 
option. Now there are games that use GGPO. They are above me right here. This is from the Wikipedia article. So there are some games that you may have heard of. For example, Injustice 2. There is also on here Killer Instinct, Street Fighter 3, Third Strike Online Edition. And in the past, companies had to pay to license GGPO to use it within their game. And this might have been the reasons why GGPO wasn't adopted over more games. I'm not sure to that reason at all and why it's not used in more games because it is a very great option. Um, especially if you have played any of the games above online, then hopefully you've had positive experiences. Now, it could not have been used if we want to speculate, maybe because companies wanted to you know, develop something in-house. That way they can control everything, maybe pay less money. I don't know. But at the same time, it doesn't matter now because GGPO is free. GGPO is right here for download on GitHub. On top of that, it does now have the MIT license, which means you can use it in your video game. Although I'm not going to go onto the specifics of the MIT license, but basically it's open source. They're not responsible for it. You can do as you please, provided you follow certain steps. And if you're still thinking, wow, whoop de doo what a big deal. Look at this article right here. So this says Google thinks Stadia will have less lag than your PC in two years. Thanks to what it calls negative latency or the ability to predict your button presses. Does this sound familiar? If it doesn't, you probably just had this video on mute. Uh, but if it does sound familiar, it's because we just went over it. So GGPO, I would say, is a very similar solution where it does predict your inputs. And I'll leave a link to this article in the description below. But essentially, Google here is just saying they're developing a system to predict your inputs to help reduce latency which is exactly what GGPO does. Now, people are getting up in arms about this already, saying, well, Google's just gonna play your games for you. And that's probably not gonna be the case, and there might even be rollback introduced here. Anyways, that's all I've got for today. So if you do have any questions on GGPO, I will leave some links to some very helpful resources in the comments section, in the pinned comments, so you can see it yourself. So huge shout out to Tony Cannon for making this now open source under the MIT license. And hopefully this helps games moving forward in terms of netcode. This is actually pretty huge news and something I'm very excited about. If you liked the video, leave a like. If you didn't like the video, leave a like. Hit that subscribe button. Check out my other videos. Thank you, everyone. Take care.